Right, well, um, the landscape for mental health services today, I must say, when it came through, this was a bit of a gift for an amateur photographer. Um, so, but I resisted. I've only put, given you one or two of my photographs to, uh, to see. Um, I think one of the key things to say about the landscape in Wales is um, that it is different in Wales. Um, we service plan in Wales. We don't commission. And if, if there are people from England here, you will know quite how the conversations we are having are very, very different to those we used to have um, in, in England, where people are very much looking at very different models. Lovely. Uh, is, that, is that better? Yeah. 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 Right. Um, also, I mean, the other key thing, I suppose, is that we're putting at the heart of everything we do in Wales sustainable development. Um, so we are investing for the future and have been doing so for some time now. And there is a real commitment that um, the investment is not in profits for other people, but the investment is in our future in Wales. So things like early years and young people in Wales really matter. And um, there are beginnings of signs that that investment is working. For example, and I know it's not in the mental health field, but we are getting dropping rates of teenage pregnancy. And actually, if you think of where cycles of problems begin, then tackling some of those root causes in young people um, is particularly critical. So that really does take us on into um, the mental health um, agenda, I think. And um, I, like Phil, feel that this is um, a very exciting time. I will say it's also going to be clearly a very challenging time. Um, so we have some very um, challenging but interesting times ahead of us. I think it's worth mentioning that talking with Stuart today, and one of the key things that, that we want to, to promote in Wales is working in partnership. So. Whilst we have pr produced a strategy, um, a draft strategy for consultation, even that we have done in partnership with many people, um, probably in this room, but certainly around Wales. So there's a lot of work that has gone on even before producing a draft consultation strategy um, that has incorporated what people feel and when we say people we mean service users we mean service carers we mean voluntary sector we mean partners across Wales so working with people like Stuart <coughs> Phil and Sean um, uh, Richards our strategy lead have been working in great detail going out and meeting with groups of people not just in mental health but also in housing departments uh, with headmasters with schools, um, with um, employers, so that we're beginning to get a feel in Wales of where we want to go. Um, there were key manifesto commitments um, on mental health incorporated within Programme for Government. Now, it sounds dry, but it matters, because it matters because mental health needs to know that it's at the top of any government agenda. And the key agenda produced by the current Welsh Government was programme for government. It's what we want to see, what the First Minister wants to see delivered um, across Wales by the end of this term. And his view is that unless you can see differences, unless you can see real things delivered that people understand and that we're making a difference, then actually it hasn't worked. And I think a lot of us would relate to that. We voted in a government, therefore we want to see the changes that they've said and the things they've said they want to deliver, delivered. So his key emphasis is on delivery and that's very much what Programme for Government is about. Following that, the Health Minister then published Together for Health, which set out the vision for the NHS. There is also a vision Sustainable Social Services and there are other documents which I'll be referring to later that all should feed into what we want for mental health in Wales. So finally, um, within that, we are producing this year four programmes and the mental health strategy, 
the consultation of which was published yesterday, is called Together for Mental Health. And the reason that we've called it that is it is about everybody working together, but it's also um, to fit in and for people to understand that this is the broad direction that Wales is travelling in. Um, as we will discuss later, there's also quite a bit about um, the Mental Health Measure Wales, which is, I think, one of the exciting and innovative things that we're doing in Wales that isn't being done elsewhere and um, is of European interest um, as, as to what difference putting rights into law that have not been there before um, is going to make. So, Together for Mental Health, uh, what is it? It's a strategy for mental health and for mental well-being. Um, it's a new approach. Important to say it's building on the past. We aren't throwing away the things that have gone before. Um, the previous strategy, equity, empowerment, um, um, was very well received. And actually, we didn't want to throw that away. We wanted to build um, on that, but look to the future. I think the key differences are that this is even more cross-government than previously. And there is now a focus on mental well-being as well as recovery. I think some service users have said, don't forget that actually we need to be improving services as well. We, f we feel the consultation draft has got that right. We will be very interested to hear what you feel. The strategy, as you would expect, is embedding the mental health um, Wales measure. Um, and the aspiration is that Mental health services in Wales should match those anywhere in the world um, that are good. So we want world-class services in Wales. We don't want good enough services. Another key difference for the strategy is that it's all ages, um, from um, childhood through to uh, end of life. And in particular, that what we are talking about, about is what it's going to deliver, what the outcomes are going to be, what difference, as the First Minister would say, it's going to make for people. What difference is it going to make to you and to your family on the ground, whoever you are? And I'm going to take it through chapter by chapter. You'll have the opportunity to read it yourself, but um, chapter one is about promoting mental well-being and preventing mental health problems. So the vision is to contribute to a flourishing Wales by improving mental health and mental well-being. And important to say that well-being is a positive state. So it's not the absence of having any problems, but it is about flourishing, about the positive aspects of your life. It's about improving physical health. It's about having an active Wales, whether you're in childhood and keeping children active, whether you're an adult, or whether you're in old age, because we know that it is a protective factor. And it's also about looking at the issues that damage people's health, such as smoking, alcohol, substance misuse, or diabetes, possibly due to medication. So it's about taking seriously the physical health of the wider population, but also for people with mental health problems, because we know there are specific issues for people with mental health problems, and that they have inequities in their physical health due in part to, um, to things like um, their activity levels and uh, smoking. And we need to help people and empower them to change behavior. It's resilience-based, so we want people across Wales to have the resilience to, to not develop mental health problems in, in, um, throughout their lives. So that's about teaching that to young children, imparting it to people when they have problems, and taking that developmental approach. And it's about doing that across the lifespan, using all agencies to support that, and it has to be about fairer health outcomes for everybody. So it's looking at our population level, it's looking at communities, <coughs> and then and how we can construct vibrant communities. Um, you'll perhaps know that we have a dementia vision for Wales, and that is about supportive communities for dementia. So we, we are in Wales taking that communities first approach. And 
Um, it's also then looking at the individual level about how you can promote mental well-being. And it's about a partnership with the public. So what do we want? Well, we want more understanding of what mental health problems are, what mental illness is, what resilience is. We want less stigma and less discrimination. Um, and you will be, many of you will be aware that um, a large Time to Change uh, Wales um, strategy has been launched by the voluntary sector, funded by the lottery and part funded by Welsh Government. <coughs> We want service users um, and, I, and carers indeed involved and empowered not just in their own care but also in developing service provision and monitoring it. We want transparency for what is happening in mental health services. Um, we want support um, for uh, families and for carers and um, notably young carers. Um, and uh, people are entitled in Wales under the carer's measure for assessment and for information and we, we expect that to be um, delivered. And always at the heart of this, um, the Mental Health Wales measure 2010 is supporting that process. Chapter 3. Chapter 3 is about what goes on in, in services. So it's about well-designed, integrated networks of care. Um, it's about holistic, evidence-based, safe, sustainable world quality services. Um, services that can actually deliver those um, improved outcomes that I've been talking about. Services that work together and people that work together. Um, so the vision needs to be about service users and carers working with their professionals that, that know them, with the third sector and with other agencies, so that it is a joint effort. It isn't about being done to or doing to, it is about working together. Clear and integrated pathways so people know where to go and when. Um, that pathway going through primary care, which is where most people want to be looked after, um, whether primary care is in, within social services um, and <coughs> is that tier one delivery within social services, whether it's being able to go to the Citizens Advice Bureau and get advice uh, or your GP, um, community services and then secondary and more specialist services. I mentioned briefly at the beginning it, this is about a life course approach but we were told very firmly actually particularly from the learning dis, um, from the um, old age um, uh, um, mental health services that services have to be age appropriate not age blind that it is about the right service and the right intervention at the right time, in the right place, with the right outcome. It isn't saying one size fits all. And it's about developing services for children that meet their needs at that time, that prevent them going on. It's about early intervention with young people. It's about supporting adults in their recovery and reabling them to get on with their lives. And the vision for older people has to be that we help people, even if they have a degenerative condition such as dementia, live as good a life as they can. It has to encompass um, co-occurring conditions. Um, so if people have physical health problems, we know they have a higher rate of um, mental health problems, substance misuse, learning disability, um, problems with hearing or seeing and for people such as veterans and we want equality for all vulnerable groups and the the strategy goes into um, some quite a lot of detail about the vision for that because i have 15 minutes i am rushing a little <laughs> okay um chapter four one system to improve mental health this is about cross-sector action for a holistic approach for mental health and mental well-being. Considering eight areas of life, there's been a lot of discussion about um, the eight areas of life. 
Um, and it has to be meaningful for, I'm quite relieved this has come up as well as it has actually. But I think the key thing is that Wales is large enough um, to be, to do this effectively, but it's also small enough to stay really connected. <coughs> and this jigsaw puzzle is about how everyone can work together and connect in order to do this in partnership. We need to understand that health is critical is a critical part of people's lives, but it's actually quite a small part. And who your friends are, what you do in the evenings, whether you've got a decent house, whether you've got enough money, all really matter to real people. So it isn't just about health. It has to be about the wider determinants of what makes people's lives productive and what contributes to their well-being. <coughs> and uh, chapter five is delivering for mental health. Again, promoting this partnership approach that I've been talking about is about having a skilled, engaged and well-led workforce who are competent in delivering evidence-based interventions to people that need them when they need them. It's about safe, dignified and respectful provision for people. I can't not say it's also going to be in the in the foreseeable future about financial resources being used efficiently and effectively. There are real challenges to that. We need to be moving into a service that is truly fit for the 21st century. It is about learning the lessons when things go wrong without scapegoating. And it's about taking the lessons and delivering improved services because, because you've learned from them. And importantly for Wales, it's about a strong and vibrant research and development community because if Wales is to have a place in, in the world and we are to want the best to come here, it has to feel an exciting place to be. I'm now very briefly going to talk about the Mental Health Wales measure, um, which was developed uh, with cross-party support um, and received royal approval in December 2010. I don't want to say much about it. Barbara, in the next session after the coffee break, will be talking about part one. Um, part four advocacy has already been implemented in, in April. Um, I did want to say about part two and part three, care and treatment planning and reaccess to services, that this was something that's very important um, to service users. I've never, I don't think I've ever met a service user that did not say they did not want a care plan, that did not say, I want to know who to contact and what to do in an emergency, and I want to know um, what, my, what we've agreed, because it's quite difficult sometimes after you leave the room to remember what was said and what was agreed. And I'll also say, actually, for professionals, when you're seeing eight people in a clinic, it can actually be quite hard for you to remember when you're writing up what happened. So getting that care and treatment plan is really important. And I think it's worth saying, um, in Wales now, in adult mental health services, we've got more work to be done in older people's and children's mental health services, but in Wales now, audits are showing that about 90% of pa patients, service users, um, have a care and treatment plan and I'd say in 15 years of CPA that has never happened it isn't <coughs> happening elsewhere in um, the UK and that is being achieved <coughs> because of the measure and I think that it is one of the things that will deliver real changes and real improvements and empower service users this is my last slide um, next steps well, this new strategy, as I've said, it's building on ex um, where we've been. Um, it's going to tie together um, outstanding actions because one of the issues is that there are a lot of actions out there. And I think for everybody to know where we're going, we need to pull that together into one delivery plan. 
So there is a Secure Services Action Plan. There is the Talk to Me Suicide and Self-Harm Action Plan. There is the Dementia Vision. And we've made good progress on those and other documents. But now we need to be smart and we need to put in all of the actions and be clear about where we're going, referring to those plans, which still stand, but taking it forward. So this delivery plan, following consultation, which I hope everybody in this room will feel they want to contribute to, um, the delivery will emerge with the final strategy. Uh, we hope, um, in if I say uh, early autumn, that's probably a, a, a government. So we, we hope that will be emerging um, later this year. There will be a national partnership board um, to oversee delivery by stakeholders. And I think, really, um, to get back to the landscape of Wales, um, this, it's going to be challenging, it's going to be tough. Getting to the top of these hills is quite tough. I can tell you how to get to the top of these hills if you want to know. <laughs> but it's about all of us working together. The landscape is challenging. It's going to be particularly challenging in the new economic environment. But equally, the potential and the view when you get there is tremendous. Welsh Government can't do this alone. It actually, Welsh Government can't do it. But the people in this room and across services, working with service users and carers, can do this. But only if they work together. So I give you that challenge or call to arms, if you like. This is what we want to see for the future. I hope you'll join with us with that vision. I hope you'll contribute to the consultation and we can work together to define where we're going and make sure we deliver on it. Thank you.